Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to our Python series. In this video, we're going to tackle object-oriented programming. Every programmer, no matter what language you learn in the future, no matter wherever you go, object-oriented programming is going to be one of the most important skills you should know. Any code you write, any project you make will have some aspect of classes and instances that you'll be using, and it's always good to understand how that works, and this lecture will hopefully cover all of that. So let's get started. Now, classes in Python are very straightforward. Object-oriented programming in Python consists of two main sort of categories, classes and objects. Classes are the overall type, they're a category. They could be person, forest, animal, cars. It's broad, it's supposed to be vague. And then from that class, you get objects. Objects are an instance of that class. If I have a person class, let's say, and I want to create an instance of that person class, I would create a new object, okay? And that object could be Avi, it could be person one, it could be person two, it doesn't matter. But you create an object of that class and that becomes an instance of that class. So enough of me trying to explain, let me go ahead and show you an example. So go ahead and in your console, go, type class person colon. So this goes ahead and creates our person class. And for now, I'm just gonna say pass. Again, remember we learned pass a couple lectures ago. Pass basically is a filler. It basically means that, hey, we're leaving it blank for now. We'll add more stuff later, but this is a working class. Now I wanna go ahead and create an instance or an object of this class. The way you do that in Python is you give it a variable name. So I'm gonna go ahead and call the instance of my class P and set this equal to person and then brackets. So P is equal to person brackets, hit enter, and now P is an object of the person class, okay? So if I hit P, I get person object at some number, fantastic. So that is the most simple class you can make. Now, in Python, Python uses something known as self. If you've used Java or C Sharp, you know this, when you say like this dot some method, this dot some value. In Python, we use self. And any function you have in Python, no matter if it has any parameters or doesn't have any parameters, you still have to pass in the argument self. Self refers to the current object you have or the current instance that you have. So self in this scenario would refer to P, the P object I have right now. It refers to itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and recreate the person class and I'm gonna go ahead and define a couple of methods. I'm gonna say def get name and then in here, even though we don't have any parameters, you still have to pass in self, okay? So hit colon and then I'm gonna print out Avi and then I'll do one more and I'll say def get age, pass in self and print out 16, awesome. So again, functions are very straightforward. We covered them a couple of, a couple of lectures ago. Def get name again. We're creating a get name function, passing in the self parameter, and then printing out Avi, printing out sixteen based on the function. So hit enter. Now let's go ahead and create a new person object again, calling it p. And now I can go ahead and call various functions of this object. So I can say p dot get name, Avi, and p dot get age, sixteen. Awesome. So again, note how we pass in self. What self does is it tells the class which object is performing this function. Which object am I trying to perform this function on? So the way I want you to think about it is when you pass in self into this function, it basically means that we're calling the method person.getAge. And inside of this, we're passing in the object, which is P and then that's it. Since there are no other parameters, this is basically the function we're passing. So that's self for you in a nutshell, and that's how you create functions in a class. Now, one last thing I wanna cover is the initialization function. The init function in Python allows us to create an object of the class with specific properties, specific attributes. Right now, our person class is hard-coded. Every person who's created has the name Avi and the age 16. What if I want to change that? The way I can change that is by using an init function. The init method is called right when you create the object and it takes in the parameters you passed in and assigns them to the variables in the class. So class person, def, 
And then instead of just typing in it, you're going to type two underscores. So not just one, but two in it, and then two more underscores. Okay. So you should see this purple highlight again, two underscores, make sure you're not typing one, it's two, then in it, and then two more underscores. Awesome. And then we're going to pass in self like any other function, but now we can pass in different parameters. So in the case of ours, we had age and name. So I'm going to go ahead and say name and age and now colon. Now we have to associate the parameters that are passed in and actually store that. So the way we do that is we say self dot name is equal to name self dot age is equal to age. I'll explain this code in just a second. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a function, get name pass self. And instead of just printing out Avi this time, I can go ahead and say print your name is, and then I'm going to go ahead and say self dot name and the exact same thing I'm going to do with get H pass in self. And I'm going to go ahead and print out your age is, and then self dot H. So go ahead and get this code down. Again, we have three functions down. We have an init function. We have a get name and we have a get H hit enter. And now our person class has been created. So let's go ahead and call this P one P one is equal to person. But now we have to pass in a name and an H. If we just call P one equal to person, we get an error, which says that, Hey, your init function takes in two required arguments. So P one is equal to person. And now let's go ahead and say, um, Bob, and let's say he is, um, 22. Okay. It doesn't matter. So P one is equal to person Bob 22. And now if I go ahead and say P one dot get name or get age, I get your age is 22 and P one dot get name is your name is Bob. Fantastic. So hopefully that made sense to you guys. What the init function does is it takes in parameters that you want to pass in when creating the object. That could be anything you want, any parameters you need to create the object of that class. And then to store those parameters, to store those arguments, you say self dot the variable name. Again, this is name. Okay. I'm passing in name, but I could have said self dot n self dot anything, but whatever I store the attribute as, then anywhere else in my class, I can call it. So when I first create the person object, I say self dot name is name self dot age is age. And then later on in these two functions, I go ahead and recall the name and the age of that person class of that object that was created. Anyways, awesome job guys. That was the basics of object oriented programming. Again, remember it's two different sections. You have classes and objects. Classes are the overall duplicator. It's the duplication machine. You're allowed to create a structure and then the objects are instances of that structure. So I could have a class car and then I could create various cars, a Bugatti, um, um, a Chevrolet, a Ford, doesn't matter. But basically that's how classes and objects work. In the next few lectures, we'll cover more about these, understand some various concepts and concepts in object oriented programming. And hopefully at this end of this series, you will have understood object oriented programming to what it is. Thank you so much for listening guys. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.